Okay, so for today we are going to discuss about abstract, how to create it, and different types of abstract. So, sana may matutunan kayo. Although this topic uh, would be for some people parang napakasimple naman. But the truth is, napaka-importante din pong malaman ang tungkol sa abstract when it comes to creating your research paper. Alright, so although I put there, here, in my slide, this is qualitative research. But, uh, just to correct it, pwede din to sa quantitative research. It's just that ito kasing pinagamit kong PowerPoint, I use this when I discuss uh, during yung semester that I was handling practical search 1, which is of course a qualitative research na subject all right so ngayon simulan na natin so paano ba gumawa ng isang abstract for for those people na hindi alam kung ano yung abstract ito yung pinakaunang makikita mo bago mo mabasa yung major parts ng research which is nag-i-start sa introduction it basically gives you uh, more of the overview of uh, kung ano yung content ng research but maraming estilo pa paano mo ipipresent yung overview ng iyong research all right so let us start so the steps in creating the abstract napaka simple lang and later on i will show you how to create your own abstract so first, let us discuss paano nga ba? Ano bang mga steps? So this is uh, steps only involve four steps. Alright? So una, first step is for you to write the whole the whole purpose of the study or the objective or objectives of your study. Yun yung pinakaunang step. And then the second step would be for you to write the research method. Okay? Yung research method, kung natatandaan nyo sa mga vlog, sa vlog natin noon, uh, of course, it will involve ano yung, sino yung mga participants, anong method yung ginamit, quantitative, uh, quantitative method, qualitative ba, did you, did you use uh, questionnaire, or did you employ uh, interview uh, questions, right? And then the third step, is for you to write the major findings of the study. So, dapat hindi talaga yun mawala. And then, last step is to write a short summary of interpretation or pepededing conclusion. Alright? So, bago natin, uh, bago ako magpakita ng example kung paano gumawa ng abstract, let me explain to you na itong mga steps will not be applicable sa lahat ng types ng abstract. But this is, for me, the most ideal way kung paano kayo gagawa ng abstract for your research. Alright, the different types. Okay, although marami pa to, but I will be showing you only several types of abstract. So, the types of abstract, unang-una is the critical abstract. So, allow me to read. A critical abstract explains the judgment or comment. So, malitong pagkakalagay ng comma. So, a critical abstract explains the judgment or comment about the study's validity, reliability, or completeness while describing major findings and information. Kaya siya tinatawag na critical abstract because meron kasing involved na criticism, okay, from the researcher himself about anong ginajudge niya tungkol sa validity ng iyong data or the rela and the reliability of the data, okay? While describing major findings and information. Of course, hindi nawawala talaga pag gagawa ng abstract yung major findings na na na-discover ng isang researcher as he, as he conducted his or her uh, research. The researcher evaluates the paper and often compares it with other works on the same subject, okay? So, yun yung paano ginagawa yung critical abstract. Uh, meron din siyang uh, comparison and contrast uh, <coughs> sa 
ginawa niyang research uh, to the other uh, researchers na gumawa din ng almost similar na research. Then, critical abstracts are generally, ito yung isa sa characteristics na masasabi mo, uy, critical abstract yan. So, this abstract generally is composed of 400 to 500 words in length due to the additional interpretive commentary. So, medyo mahaba yung critical abstract. So, these types of abstracts are used infrequently. So, hindi mo din madalas na makita na mayroong gumagamit ng critical abstract. Alright. So, the next one, the next type of abstract is the descriptive abstract. So, ano naman itong kaibahan ng descriptive abstract? Doon sa critical abstract. So, allow me to read again. A descriptive abstract points out the type of data found in the work. Okay? So, yung pinaka uh, ina-highlight ng descript descriptive abstract ay yung mga type ng information na maaari mong mabasa sa kabuuan ng ginagawang uh, pananaliksik sa ginawang research paper. It creates no judgment. So, kay, uh, meron siyang malaking kaibahan doon sa tinatawag natin, critical abstract. Kasi walang judgment ang ginagawa sa pagsulat ng descriptive abstract. It creates no judgments about the work, nor does it state the results or conclusions of the research. Wala din siyang uh, dinidetalye tungkol sa resulta ng ginawang pag-aaral. So it, does it does incorporate keywords found in the text and may include the purpose. So yung maaari mo lang mahanap kapag descriptive abstract ay yung uh, purpose. Pwede din yung mga keywords na maaari mong mahanap dun sa nilalaman ng research paper. The methods, okay, and the scope of the research. So essentially, the descriptive abstract only, okay, ito ha, yung general way for you to remember what is descriptive abstract. So essentially, this, the descriptive abstract only describes the work being summarized. Okay, din describe na lang talaga. Uh, hence, the, the name descriptive abstract. Yes, it describes the work being summarized. So, ano yung inilalarawan niya? Inilalarawan niya ang mismo research study na ginawa. So, ginagawa niya lang ng summary. Descriptive abstracts are usually very short. So, kung kanina, umaabot ng 400 dahil nga sa additional na uh, commentary, ito ay uh, binumbuo lamang ng 100 words or less. That is descriptive abstract. So, napakalaki ng kaibahan ng descriptive abstract doon sa tinatawag natin critical abstract kanina. Alright. And the next one is the informative abstract. Okay? So, what is an informative abstract? So, an informative abstract presents and explains all main arguments. Okay? Ito yung kinaganda ng informative abstract. Para sa akin, ito yung uh, sinasuggest ko na gawin ng mga students ko. So, itong informative abstract. Kasi it explains all the main arguments na maaring maging issue tungkol sa mismong ginagawa mong, tungkol sa ginagawa mong research or study. And also includes the important results and evidence. So, by the way, explain ko lang kung ano yung mga main arguments. It, these are the main topics within the research paper that you are making. Okay? Kaya, sinasama siya because this is an informative abstract. And additionally, uh, the same pa rin, lalagay pa rin natin yung findings. Uh, this is the same as saying important results and evidence. Okay? An informative abstract includes the information that can be found in a descriptive abstract. Okay? Yung lahat na narinig nyo kanina about descriptive abstract, nandito din yun sa informative abstract. Uh, it will include the purpose, the methods, the scope, but it also includes, ito yung kaibahan niya naman, it also includes the results and conclusion of the research and the recommendations of the author. Okay, sinasama din dito ang recommendations ng author. The length varies according to discipline, but an informative abstract is usually no more than 300 words in length. Okay, yan yung kaibahan ng ating informative abstract. Alright? 
dahil mayroon na siyang anong anong dinagdag, mayroon na siyang conclusion ng sa research and the recommendation of the author. But sometimes he din uh, sometimes hindi mo din mahanap yung uh, recommendation. Okay? Uh, it will depend na din kasi sa gumagawa if uh, if the person or you for example thinks na parang medyo worthy na uh, parang gusto nyo pa rin uh, ilagay yung recommendation dun sa research paper na merong part ng research paper na merong kayong recommendation so I think para dun sa akin hindi na kailang, kinakailang maglagay ng recommendation sa mismong abstract okay leave it to the part of your research paper na meron dong recommendation Okay, so remember that when it comes to informative abstract, matatawag natin siyang informative abstract kung, ito ha, the length varies according to discipline. But an informative abstract is usually, kadalasan, no more than, hindi siya lalampas ng 300 words in length. So, pwede siyang 299, pwede siyang 300, pero hindi siya pwede maabot ng 301 Alright, so that is informative abstract. Alright. So, now, I will show you an example kung paano gumawa ng uh, abstract of your research. Because ito yung pinakaunang makikita kasi if you are going to example lang, kung maghahanap ka ng mga example ng research in the, on the internet, marami kang mahanap. And usually, yung mababasa mo talaga is yung abstract. Alright. Napaka-informative ng abstract kasi makikita natin kagad doon kung ano yung naging findings. Kaya nga hindi ito nawawala uh, when it comes to topics about writing and abstract. Okay, so without further ado, let us begin. Okay, as I've said earlier, unang-una ay kinakailangan magsimula tayo sa objective of the study. And then the second is the research method. So it will include yung participants, yung ginamit na mga instrument. Okay, is it qualitative or quantitative uh, method? And then the third one, the findings or the results of the study. Kina kailang ma iditali sa sa abstract. And then the summary or conclusion. All right, yung summary or conclusion. Na dada, dapat gawin natin. So, you can also add recommendation, pero if you think na hindi na kailangan, it will be up kasi ikaw pa rin naman yung may-ari ng research paper mo. So, pwede din hindi mo lagyan ng recommendation. Okay, so let me show you a proper example. So, this part here shows us the objective. Okay? Kung mapapansin nyo, yung pinaka phrase na nagpapakita dyan, na ito yung objective is this research investigates okay this research investigates okay so ibig sabihin this is uh, about the objective or the purpose of the study the emotional and physiological effects of cyberbullying on the university students the primary objective of this investigation is to identify the victims of cyberbullying and critically analyze their emotional state and frame of mind in order to provide them with a workable and feasible intervention in fighting cyber bullying. Okay? And the second one, in this research, a triangulation method, quantitative, qualitative, and descriptive, is employed in the investigation. The instruments used in the study in which 365 students participated included questionnaires, interviews, checklists, and observations. So basically, ang pinapakita dito is yung second step natin, which is tungkol sa research method. Okay, nakikita niyo, gumagamit daw ng triangulation method, quantitative, qualitative, and descriptive. At pinapakita din kung ilan yung mga participants at kung anong ginamit ng mga instrument para makakuha ng data. And this, in this part, to also lead us to the third step in writing our abstract, which is the results of the study indicated that a significant number of the respondents, 35 or 13%, had suffered emotionally due to cyberbullying, 
Furthermore, 300 or 85% of the respondents indicated that in their views, cyberbullying causes emotional and psychological stress. Further, majority of the respondents, 255 or 70%, agree that cyberbullying adversely affects students' academic performance. Results further designate that 60 or 16.6% of the respondents is specified that they had bullied someone inside the university at least two or three times a month, while four or 1.1% of the participants said that they had bullied someone outside the university at least two or three times a month. It is interesting to note that majority of the students, 75 or 20.8% signify that they, had, they have heard bullying taking place inside the university and this particular paragraph is about i uh, know this the third the third part of the third step in writing the abstract is about the findings or the results of our study it in third part and lastly the last step is for us to create a summary or, or a conclusion all right so generally this study revealed that university students were not spared the detrimental effects of cyber bullying. So, yun yung pinakalas, uh, yung ating summary or conclusion. Alright, so, pwede tayong magdagdag niya ng recommendation. Say, anong kaka-recommend niyo sa mga universities, di ba? Ayun natin sa last part. But basically, this is already a good uh, kind of abstract at least in my own point of view <laughs> all right so guys that would be all thank you very much uh kung may natutunan naman kayo do not hesitate to uh, comment down and before i say goodbye um let me ask you a question about this particular example of all the types of abstract na na discuss natin before this particular example what kind of abstract do you think is this example so guys, comment down below kung alam niyo yung answer. And later on, I'll be back uh, checking your comments. Alright? And I'll be uh, answering you para din naman uh, meron tayong konting activity sa ginawa nating vlog for today. And that's all folks. This is Professor Haggard. Please not forget to click like and subscribe sa mga hindi pa nakaka-subscribe. Okay? So check out for more videos in the future. Of course, I will keep updating uh, for more educational videos just for you. Bye-bye.